Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with Fred Carey, Carey, sorry, Fred Carey from Idea Pros, CEO and founder. Fred, how are we doing? I am doing awesome. Thanks for having me on. You know, it was kind of funny. We were, we were talking right before we got on here, you know, about we have, I'm doing two different recordings because we always seem to have to do some edits in a podcast. And I've re- I just started out, I already have to do an edit. <laughs> <That's how> we- <laughs> so no Fred, Fred, first, uh, tell us where are you calling in from and give us a little background. Who is Fred? Um, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, background, go to Fred Carey News uh, on Google, and you'll see uh, too many stories about me, uh, C-A-R-Y. But I am in La Jolla, which is a part of San Diego, California. I'm looking out over the ocean right now uh, over your head, and uh, it's a beautiful day here in, in sunny California. Um, I started an entrepreneurial journey a long, long time ago and uh, have built up 10 different companies from the ground up. And a couple of them have gone public, a couple others acquired by public companies. Uh, still have a private company that's doing close to a billion dollars a year now. And I started Idea Pros just a few years ago to really help the 550,000 new entrepreneurs that are hatched every single month in the United States alone. So, yeah, one incredible stat, first and foremost. But before we get to that statistic, let's give the audience what is Idea Pros? How'd the concept get created and what is it? Yeah, uh, you know, a few years ago, I was sitting there thinking about whether I should stop working or whether I should work harder than I ever have in my life. (laughs) I didn't know that was the second half of that sentence, but I chose the latter one. And I did so because my statistic, I was talking about 550,000 new entrepreneurs every month in the United States, which is almost double our birth rate, by the way most of them don't have anywhere to go. Uh, the average entrepreneur is not somebody that popped out of Uber or Facebook or or somebody that built something up before. The average person that decides to become an entrepreneur is somewhere between 30 and 50. Uh, they have their own career. They've reached middle management or upper management, and they really hate their lives. Uh, they, they, they're not fulfilled. And they get up and they've been thinking about the same idea for weeks or months or in some cases, years. And so I decided they need a solution. And so with Idea Pros, literally, when we first started it, we only did full partnerships with people. And that is you come in with an idea, you help subsidize what it's going to take to turn it into a product and a company to launch. And we do everything, all the work, all the way through, guide you, teach you how to be an entrepreneur and really build this out. Um, so it's uh, an amazing thing for for us. We've had 100,000 applications in the last two years and wow. taken 400 people. So now this year, I've introduced a whole lot of free or very inexpensive products as well to try to help everybody uh, learn how to be better because the number one reason for failures for entrepreneurial companies is not money. It's that you've built something that nobody wants. And uh, it's an embarrassing thing that that's number one, but our company is designed to make that not happen. You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I'm So, you know, before Fred and I got in this conversation, I mentioned I, was at work, I work in healthcare. And literally this afternoon, I was having a conversation with our healthcare entrepreneurship department because there's so often where our providers will create a, come up with an idea or a device that they're like, this is the groundbreaking thing because it works for them, but it doesn't exactly. work for the masses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now let's beginning, beginning the idea pros, how, you know, you started this idea. How did you finance it? Did you just kind of grassroots effort it? Did you do some venture capital? Yeah, no, this was uh, bootstrapped uh, until now, by the way, we're, we're getting ready to do, our first funding uh, on Kick, uh, no, on Kickstarter, on Start Engine, which is an equity-based crowdfunding. We're getting ready to launch that um, in the next two or three weeks. We're out raising $5 million to pro- project us to the next level. Uh, we have a lot of things we do, and we don't have the cash flow to be able to pull them all off. But I, from day one, bootstrapped this with my own capital, 
uh, which is, by the way, 87% of entrepreneurial businesses are built using your own capital, selling your house, getting a second mortgage, selling the car, one of the kids, whatever you got to, <laughs> whatever you got to get rid of to make it happen. So let's talk about before Idea Pros. You mentioned this, this is not your first business. What was your first entrepreneurial experience? Well, the very first thing I did was um, in uh, the food business. Uh, in fact, some people have said I've gone from uh, from taco chips to computer chips in my career. <laughs> and uh, and the first the first thing was I uh, had a <clears throat> excuse me I was living in South Florida. I had a girlfriend in San Diego, and I'd come and visit. And every time I visited, it was amazing tacos and burritos and on the east coast they weren't there yet and so i saw that uh, taco bell was creating a big presence and we thought that well, i thought that over time they'd want to come to the east coast so why not build a whole bunch of things for them to come gobble up and so i worked with a guy that had the money uh and i was 22 23 and we built in three years, we built about 70 stores. And sure enough, three years later, Taco Bell came knocking on the door and, uh, and took them all over. Uh, that was the, the very first one I did. And that was, again, in my 20s. You know, it's incredible, but I think that is a testament to the entrepreneurial mindset is, is having the foresight. Uh, I, for example, up in Alaska, Alaska, the state of Alaska actually have limited alcohol um, license up there. And so when the Alaska actually came out with their alcohol license, the gentleman went and purchased, you know, a bunch of these alcohol licenses. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, one day Costco comes calling, Hey, we want to build in Fairbanks, Alaska, but we can't cause we don't, we want to sell alcohol, but we need an alcohol license. And this gentleman's like, well, here you go. I, you know, whatever, whatever his dollar amount was, you know, was able yeah. to, but I think again, that's that foresight you know, the, the entrepreneurial foresight. Now, what yeah. other businesses outside of you, you continue to progress. So you sell, you sold all these Taco Bells, then what? Uh, we uh, went into concert promotion, uh, had a, a company that did live concerts uh, around the Eastern United States. I did that for a few years. Uh, then I became an attorney by accident. Uh, I, 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 just, <laughs> that's a, that's an, <laughs> well, I was going to say that's another show, but, but basically when I was managing bands, uh, there was two attorneys that uh, were fighting with me for three months over a, con a management contract. And at the end they said, we got to meet your lawyer. He's a real tough asshole. And I said, that's me. I have no lawyer. This, <laughs> this is me. And, and basically they said, I'll tell you what, if you want to go get a license, become a lawyer, we'll make you a partner today. We'll give you a third of everything we make and you can start working with us and go to law school. And so um, I did. And, and I became a lawyer and I did that for 10 years. And then I got into technology in the late 90s. And the late, in the late 90s, I built like five different companies. <laughs> so you just decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to, go to law school and become a lawyer based off of having this experience with this band at that time. Yeah. And it's worse than that because when <laughs> I, when I said, yes, I only had six, six months of community college and um, you need to have a degree to be able to get into law school. And so I don't know if you know what clepping is, but it's a co college level ef efficiency, but I forget what it is, but you can, you can go there and you can take a test on any course. And if you pass it at a certain rate, they'll give you full credit for that course. Um, I, in, in a period of three weeks, I got two and a half, three and a half years of school in three weeks by clepping the entire program, uh, which usually people do that for one class or two. So I was able to do that, able to get a degree in three weeks and then get into law school. And, <laughs> and the rest is history. I was very successful at a career I did not care for. How, how important was, you know, all of these diverse experiences in, in like helping you be successful as an entrepreneur? There's one thing, in fact, we talked about it just a couple of nights ago, interesting story of, of another guy with a couple of 
hundred million dollar plus exits. Um, he was talking about it. He had a hundred million dollar exit and a three hundred million dollar exit. The second one was with Lending Tree, and he's now still president of the division in Lending Tree that that acquired him. Perseverance was the word that he used, and it's a word that I used two months ago on. I have my Instagram page, official Fred Carey. Uh, I use that word there. That's what you have to have. You have to have perseverance. And the more dark waters you navigate and get through them successfully, the more you realize this is all about determination and, and hanging in there and always looking for the opportunity and, and taking it. You know, my career is very diverse. I, I, I went from from tacos to entertainment. I did finance, e-commerce, software, hardware, uh, really all over the board. <laughs> the one thing in common was I was looking for a hole. I was looking for a market that had a hole in it that needed to be filled. And if you can do that and you can be persistent and persevere through the ups and downs that everybody has as an entrepreneur, then you're going to make it. So that's what I learned. Diversity uh, doesn't matter because the structure is the same. You get from A to Z by following certain criteria and you'll find your way there, even though you have to take 50 right and left turns that you weren't expecting to take. What what you say has been easy about being an entrepreneur? You kind of mentioned your primarily focus is where's where's the need? Let me target those needs. One, how do you find those needs, right? And then what what has been easy or difficult about finding those needs? The difficult part of finding the need in the marketplace uh, in the beginning was that I was very focused on me and what I thought was a cool idea and what I thought would work, what I thought everybody wanted, um, or what I thought my mom would want because she'd say, <laughs> Freddie, that's a great idea. You should do that. Well, don't take advice from your mom or from yourself. Take advice from your customers or your future customers. You know, So the hardest part was understanding that the, that need didn't equate to my need it equated to figuring out what the, the the market wants and being able, by the way, to pivot, even if you think you got it, and then your feedback from your customers tell you something else. Uh, that's the hard part, figuring out how to do that. And the easy part is the equal sign at the other side of that equation, that once you figure that out, you're going to be a lot more successful. You're going to have a lot more opportunity because of the fact that you're getting what they want, you're positioning it in a way that they want to have it. And therefore, those customers become the loyal advocates of your brand. And that's what makes it easy. You know, as you're kind of discussing what makes it easy, you're also kind of defining, you know, how do how do you become successful? So what does it take to be a successful business or a successful business owner, I should say? Oh, you got to always push yourself. You got to, the same guy that was talking about uh, a couple nights ago to all my partners, I have 300 companies that I own 30% of uh, that we've helped each entrepreneur build. And, and this guy was two exits, hundreds of millions of dollars, no investment from anybody else. So he and his brother got all that money and Uncle Sam. Uh, what he talked about is during that whole process, there were countless nights where he would be laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, bawling his eyes out because he didn't know where he was. He didn't know where he was going. He, he doubted himself and found some way to get up in the morning and try again. Um, and we all go through these really horrible times. I do that now myself. I've had all these successes. There are fires. Can you imagine with 300 startups, there's fires multiple times every single day. And I wake up nights as well without the crying, but uh, I should. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and that's what, as an entrepreneur, that's what you have to realize to be successful is you have to work your way through the doubt. And he said the other night, uh, if you could go back to your younger self and say something to your younger self, what would it be? And he said, have more confidence. You're in this because you can do it. And if things aren't going right, don't blame yourself, figure out how to make them right. 
And if you can develop that self-confidence and keep it with you, you're going to go a lot further. You know, it's funny you say that because I I was talking to my wife earlier and going through this moment of that self-doubt, right? Where I'm like, man, I wish I would have done a lot of these things before because uh, now I kind of feel like I'm working backwards a lot of times uh, and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm trailing behind. What would you say? Have you ever had those moments of self-doubt? Yeah. Yeah. And again, I don't want to keep plugging my free Instagram page, <laughs> but I, I, I said that uh, on there a few days ago. Um, you can't change your past, but you can change your future. And you can change your future by forgetting the past and forgetting about what you should have done, when you should have done it, why you didn't do it then, what would be different if, had you done it. Forget about all that stuff because that didn't happen. And it's not going to happen if you're wasting your time thinking about it. If you take that wasted time and instead focus on what did I learn and how am I going to, how am I going to implement that into my future? that's when you're going to do a lot better. Start being future thinking because that's the only thing you can change is your future. Yeah, I, I remember I one time uh, I saw this quote, um, worrying works because all the things I worry about never happen. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's a great, great quote. I love that quote. <laughs> and do so you want to know my favorite quote? Oh, please. All right. And you guys, everybody listen to this one because I think it was Mark Twain that said it. He said, I'm sorry I wrote you such a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. <laughs> and, and the whole thing is get to the point, you know, get your facts going, make it short, make it direct, be concise, get your message across and stop rambling. You know, Mark Twain has some phenomenal quotes because when I was speaking with my mentor earlier this week and he, he reminded me, he, he's like, you know, every good decision came from a bad decision. Or every exactly. good actually every good experience comes from a bad decision, you know. So yeah, yeah. he also said, Don't believe everything you see on the internet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was future side. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, speaking of thoughts and ideas, you know, idea pros kind of helps people get along, move their ideas. How how does an entrepreneur turn their idea into a business? Well, that's the whole reason I started Idea Pros because it's really, really hard to do that. And uh, a lot of people, let me backtrack. Everybody has an idea and almost everybody has a pretty good idea, but hardly anybody does anything about it, right? Most people wake up in the morning, well, that was a great idea. Go back to sleep the next night and it never happens. The people that turn their ideas into something are the people that, can't go to sleep at night because the idea is gnawing at them, you know, can't stop talking about it around people. And, and over time, they find a way. And when they do that, you have to be really careful that you get the right solid advice that you need. Uh, in by the way, ideapros.com forward slash blog is an amazing page. It's the best blog page I've ever seen. I had little to do with it other than the fact that I, <laughs> I was talking I was talking all the time on, on uh, the shows I do, and they took it and created a blog out of it, which literally has just about everything you could want to know as an entrepreneur about how to start a business, how to take your idea, do something with it, how to get financing, you know, what to do about launching, why you should not get a patent before you do a, a bunch of other things, literally everything. So the best way to take an idea and turn it into a product and a company is to really do your homework, understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur, what it takes to really launch a business and how to be successful at it. You can get all that information, by the way, on our page. In fact, for those listening, you'll also be able to get this information on the newsletter. Another plug for myself, right? To subscribe to the newsletter. Now, and one second. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I think I hear my kid crying upstairs. Give me two seconds. All right. All right. Sorry about that. We're going to, the, the kid, kid is crying. So she's down here with me. I think she's, she's been running the flu. So. Oh, no, no worries. You know, I was of all my accomplishments, my biggest one, uh, 
has been raising two daughters on my own. Uh, and being so. a girl dad has got, it's, it's, I feel privileged to be a part yeah. of the, the girl dad. Now, now how important, well, you, you, sorry, go for it. I was going to say the, the one holiday that, that to me has become the most special over the years is Mother's Day. Uh, because they give me cards, they tell me how I've been both for them, how amazing it is. So you know, every dad can get a Father's Day card, but I love it. Getting a Mother's Day card is pretty oh, I bet. awesome. I bet. Yeah, that's like a different level. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so you know, you know, we've been mentioning you know t- turning all of these ideas into businesses, but how important you know is is the naming and branding and positioning of that idea? How important is naming and branding? <clears throat> if you hung out next to me for one day, you'd walk away going, wow, that's really important. Um, and it's the one thing that you can't trust your customers with. Think about it this way. So think about some of the best brands in the world. Imagine me coming up on the stage years ago in my little black t-shirt in my skinny black pants <laughs> uh, and saying to an audience of a thousand consumers, Hey guys, I'm starting this new company. I want to compete against IBM, general dynamics, digital equipment, Microsoft. And I want to call my company Apple. How many people of a thousand people would raise their hands and say, that's a great fucking idea. That's, <laughs> I hope I can swear on your show. No, um, okay. You know, that's great. Nobody out of a thousand people, people would start heckling, laughing, joking about it. Or how about showing up in Great Britain and saying, I want to start an airline and call it Virgin. What? Yeah. Right. And yet those brands are so powerful because they're different from the rest. They stand out because it's a what? What do they say? Moment. And the brands that distinguish themselves by being different really stand out and really are memorable. And so when you think of a name for your company, and there's a second part to this, but when you think of a name for your company, think of something that is memorable and uh, it creates something in the mind of, of the person who sees it or hears it. It creates vision in there because those are the things we remember better through our vision than, than we do like reading something on a piece of paper, right? Something that has a visual impact on us that we can reference, we'll remember over and over. Oh, Virgin. Yeah, that's the airline. I hope we don't crash. Is, is that the first time flying? No, Virgin became known as this is new. We are different. You, we've You've never flown this way before right yeah, you're the yeah. virgin in this equation and 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 became such a powerful brand in fact he's got a book out now uh branson has a book out now that i want to get a hold of because he talks about all these different journeys i think by the time he was 33 he had 53 companies in a bunch of different sectors so all under the virgin brand so naming is critically important the second thing though is you need to understand that your brand is not your name. Your brand is your essence. Your brand is how people perceive you. And so you and I can sit and talk for half an hour. uh, And you know, I have two daughters, and I know you have at least one. And we know something about each other and our careers and our our lives and that we both need glasses. (laughs) You, you, You can't know that about a company, right? So the persona of a company is their brand. And if everybody, if you guys listening, you guys and, and gals, I use guys indiscriminately. If you're listening and you think, you know, somebody hates your guts, they hate your guts because of the persona that they see in you, which may not be you at all. And as an organization, you have to be careful to project what you want people to see and you have to be consistent. So in the Apple example, if I say to you, hey, tomorrow, I just heard Apple is coming out with a new electric toothbrush. Every one of us is going to know exactly what that toothbrush is going to do. It's going to be sleek. It's going to have cool colors. It's going to be really solid, except the glass part will break. Um, <laughs> it, it, it'll, be, it'll be tuned into Wi-Fi, and you'll be able to tell how well you're brushing, what you're missing, maybe when you should go to the dentist again. It'll be all these cool things, not because we know what they're going to build, but because we know what they stand for. 
And so when you do your name, when you do your positioning, when you do your branding, consistency, create that persona and live it. Yeah. Now, what about, what about for Fred? What's, what's the five, 10, you know, what's, what's the exit strategy? What, where, where does Fred call it a career? Well, I promised my daughters I'd retire by the time I hit 90. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, you know, they say you spend your first half of your career building your resume and the second half building your legacy. And um, I'm in that that part of my career. So I don't know that it ends because right now I'm helping hundreds, if not thousands of entrepreneurs. Certainly we've had a hundred thousand applications uh, and I know there are many, many people to, to help. And so my goal for the rest of my life is to change the lives of 10,000 people impactfully enough that they in turn will go change the lives of a thousand. And then those thousand will change the lives of 100. And if I can accomplish that, that's a billion people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot Get of your people. calculators out. Yeah, it's a lot of people. So um, that's my goal. And so retirement really isn't on the horizon. In fact, everybody's going to think I'm an idiot. I don't have a retirement plan. I don't save money for retirement. The, why would I take the money that I can use today to grow my business, to grow my career? And, and by the way, don't take this as financial advice to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what, but why would I take the stuff that I can build now and leave it for when I'm old and feeble? Uh, you know, I'm hopeful that I've grown good enough daughters that if that ever happens, they'll take care of me. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully they're not listening. No, and you got my my wheels turning, you know, thinking about legacy and impact. You know, I've been in healthcare for over 23 years, as I, and I think many people have listening know this. And so I'm really kind of looking at what do I want to do beyond my healthcare career? Uh, and, and selfishly, I get to interview these amazing entrepreneurs like you, Fred, and, and get some insight into what what does successful entrepreneurship look like? What what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? You know, essentially, I'm getting been a lot of advice. Right. I'm getting a lot of free advice. Now, what what is some advice? Like, what's that one nugget of advice you would give an entrepreneur or some aspiring entrepreneur that maybe is going to bring it, uh, maybe wants to come to you? But what what is that one thing you would say, hey, here's one, here's a golden nugget you should definitely take with you? <clears throat> the golden nugget um, is only going to be for a small fraction of your audience because what I'm about to say is pretty painful. Um, you're never going to be successful, not in your mind. you never will have done enough. You will never have grown enough. You will never have accomplished everything you're setting out to accomplish. It will not happen. And so to be able to be what outside people think of a success, you have to be able to tolerate the pain of waking up every day knowing that you can try harder, you can do more, you gave it 110% yesterday, but you got another 10% in you. So the, the nugget I can take uh, and give to everybody is that don't do this unless you're prepared for the fire. You're going from a 40 hour job where you're getting a regular paycheck to being able to work for 80 hours for free. Uh, you'll be able to in a year or two, maybe have enough money to buy ramen. You know, things don't happen overnight. And that's part of the problem, by the way, with our new entrepreneurs, and I don't want to sound like an old father or grandfather or whatever, but everything's in our face all day long with social media. And all these people pretending to be successful on Instagram and TikTok and, you know, here's my Lamborghini and Ferrari in my home, all of which were rented for a day for a photo shoot. We have these unreasonable expectations that we have a 10-year plan and we can fulfill it in a year or less. And we can't, right? So to my golden nugget in a more positive way is understand what your long-term goals are, but focus on the tasks that you have to do today so that you're looking down and making sure you take a step forward, one step after another, looking up once in a while to know that you're getting closer and closer to those ultimate goals, but understanding that it's a journey. And being willing to take that journey as long as it takes. Well said. And you know, I you know, folks that are listening know my story. I crash and burn trying to do a clothing line. You know, that's some apparel. 
uh, I went back to school and it's because my business acuity level was very low and, and I wanted to get better. I wanted to get smarter. Uh, and I certainly would say this podcast is a, a, is a soft takeoff, right? I'm trying to get acclimated, but I'm also, you know, again, selfishly being able to listen to these stories and mm-hmm. kind of get some ideas. I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? You know, yeah. but yeah, I, I think, you know, I've, I've talked about, I've never failed in my day in my life. I've either learned or I succeeded. And it's true because you can't allow these moments of difficulties, as, as you pointed out, to be kind of the end all be all, right? We have to utilize these moments of learning opportunities. And yes, do not try to judge yourself on that perfectly curated Instagram uh, account that is, you know, perfection. I talk about often perfection is impossible to obtain. And those are just, you know, perfectly curated accounts that, that were, aren't true. They're not accurate. And, and that's, that's just the truth, right? Uh, Cause yeah. there, there are, there are individuals that it's, it's, it's not easy. It's a struggle. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this for two years and I'm like, man, this is just a podcast I'm doing on the side. Imagining having 300, you know, small businesses report up to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not easy, but you know what? It's the only way the world changes. The The people that do this, the people that are crazy enough to do this are the people that, that change the world. And so whether you want to change your world or the world, you just have to be ready to fight and they wake up and fight every day. America was built on the back of small businesses, baby. Yep. I think 97% of businesses and 97% of the driving forces in the U S are small businesses, employment and everything else. Yep. Yep. Now, Fred, is there anything you, uh, how, how can folks can actually get a hold of you if their website, I know you kind of mentioned it earlier, but go ahead and give them some information, your website, your social channels. So they have some information. Yeah. So uh, first of all, if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, and my, uh, executive assistants don't like this at all, but Fred <laughs> at ideapros.com, you reach out to me. I'll, I'll, I'll answer and I'll, I'll give you my advice if that's what you're looking for, or I'll tell you, Hey, fuck you too. If that's what you're going to write to me. Um, <laughs> so other than that, www.ideapros.com on there, as I said, we have that blog page it talks about what we do. There's an application page, but to sign up as a full partner, you do have to have capital uh, to partner with us, but there's all sorts of smaller packages. And if you go on Instagram at official Fred Carey, C-A-R-Y, I have a link tree on there. Click on that. You'll see there's uh, some free material there. There's also, which I highly recommend, not because I did it, but because I, I think it's very powerful. Uh, there is a video courses on purpose-driven entrepreneurship that no bullet points, no script, no nothing. I just talked about all the elements of things that you're going to have to consider as an entrepreneur and starting your own business. It's a couple hundred dollars. If you use a code, I think it's IG100, it becomes $147. If you don't like it, write to Fred and, and I'll give you your money back. And there's also um, on their validation package where you can take your idea, like you said, how does somebody know if they have a good idea? You can take your idea and for about a thousand bucks, we'll do everything. We'll do complete market analysis, competitive analysis, market size, market growth, market opportunity, who your who your likely customers are, help you create a pitch deck so you can go raise the capital now that you know everything you need to know about that idea to actually get money to to turn it into something. And, and again, folks, for those that are listening, if you didn't catch all of that, all of this information, I'll actually make sure I get that discount code and have it on the newsletter. Again, another plug, a reason you should subscribe to the newsletter. Visit theshadesofe.com to subscribe to the newsletter. You can also follow The Shades of E on all of the social sites at The Shades of E. For those that are listening, thank you again, Fred. Awesome conversation. Uh, thank you. I'm definitely going to have a conversation with you after we get off of this. <laughs> All right. So those no folks sweat. listening, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for listening and have a great night.